this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Progressive Rock and Metal album review series and today I'm going to be taking a look at a one-off album that came out in 1986 from a one and done band and this is their self-titled recording Emerson, Lake and Powell. So ELP broke up in 1979 and all three members would go their separate ways. Keith Emerson would go on to produce many film scores. Greg Lake would go on to release a couple of solo albums. Carl Palmer would go on to release a solo album of his own and also go on to form the supergroup Asia with John Wetton, Steve Howe and Jeff Downs. So fast forward to 1984. Emerson and Lake were very keen to reform ELP. However, Carl Palmer was unavailable as he was contracted to record another album with Asia, leaving Emerson and Lake to find another drummer. And after auditioning several drummers, they finally settled with drummer Cozy Powell. Now, Cozy Powell, of course, a legendary and iconic drummer with a huge pedigree, playing with the likes of Jeff Beck, Michael Schenker, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, to name a few. So he had pretty big shoes to fill. And Cozy Powell and Carl Palmer, of course, both very different drummers. Carl Palmer, much more finesse guy with a much more percussive approach to the music and Cozy Powell on the other hand a real powerhouse and brings a lot of hard hitting drumming to the music and really helped beef up the material and giving the band a much more muscular sound and before we continue I am dedicating this review to Rock Daydream Nation whose review inspired me to talk about this one and done album from Emerson Lake and Powell. So I'm dedicating this to him. And although this is ELP in spirit, it's a very different kind of ELP. You know, as I mentioned already, Carl Palmer, a much more of a drummer's drummer. Cozy Powell, you know, for someone playing with two true prog rock icons in Keith Emerson and Greg Lake, he really stepped his game up. You know, he really wasn't intimidated. You know, most musicians would be just frightened at the mere thought of playing with two heavyweights in Keith Emerson and Greg Lake. But I'll give Cozy Power his due. He had balls. You know, he wasn't afraid. And I thought he really matched up well with these two. And as a band, as a free piece, you know, these guys played really well together, considering that this was the only album that they recorded together. It's really good. You know, it really packs a hell of a punch. And a lot of that is Cozy Powell's drumming. Greg Lake, he sounds incredible as always. Great singing, great guitar playing, great bass playing. Keith Emerson, what more can you say? Probably the greatest keyboard player in the universe. <laughs> if I do say so myself, but an amazing album from a one and done lineup. And Carl Palmer is dearly missed on this album. I would have loved to have heard what this album would have sounded like with Carl Palmer. And this probably would have been hailed as the comeback of 86, but you know, it wasn't meant to be. Carl Palmer was having the time of his life with Asia and he was in no hurry to go back. Plus, he was contracted to do another album anyway but cozy pal did an excellent job the only problem i have with cozy pal's drumming on this album and i'm not knocking his drumming he does what he does he does his job and he does his job very well i feel that his drumming on this album it's just one way there's no surprises there's no change ups there's nothing different whereas with someone like Carl Palmer if you took five different ELP tracks with Carl Palmer's drumming they all sound different but with this album if I took five tracks from this album 
with just Cozy Powell's drumming, it all sounds pretty much the same. And I'm not knocking Cozy Powell. You know, he's a, an amazing drummer and a true legend of the kits. But I don't know, really. just feel like this really needed Carl Palmer. But that's not taking anything away from the music. You know, the music is some of the best material that ELP have ever written. And, you know, some people said it's a bit 80s, but to me, it just sounds like classic ELP, but just a bit more harder hitting and a bit more muscular. And as I said, a lot of that is due to Cozy Powell's drumming. So let's have a look, shall we? So we got lyrics and track listing. And we've got some more lyrics here as well. Most of the music is written and composed by Keith Emerson and all of the lyrics are written by Greg Lake. And there is an adaptation of Mars, the bringer of war from Gustav Holtz for planets. And there is also a cover version of Jerry Goffing and Carol King's The Locomotion. And this is very much ELP in spirit, as I said at the beginning, but just, you know, a little bit different and more in line with the feel and the sound of the 80s. So the tracks we got here are the score, which is probably the best opener for an ELP album. It's fast, it's hard hitting, it's classic ELP, and there's a really cool keyboard section in the middle which kind of harkens to what Keith Emerson would do for the 1990s Iron Man animated series which really sounds like that so it's kind of like a little warm-up and foreshadowing to what Keith Emerson would do for that cartoon and Greg Lake he's just on top vocal form and there's a really cool lyric here which really says to you that ELP is back. It says, to the show that never ends. Absolutely brilliant. You know, you can't get any better than that. And Cozy Powell, he's just a machine. One thing I will say though, you know, Carl Palmer can play fast, but he plays more for the music, which is a good thing. But with Cozy Powell, he plays like, you know, it's his last and I swear to God, if I hear Cozy Bell hit that drum one more time, I think he's going to put his fist for it. He just really packs a lot of power behind his drumming. We've got Learning to Fly, another great song. The Miracle, which kind of like segues from Learning to Fly. Absolutely brilliant. Vintage ELP. Touch and Go, which could very well be the best track of the entire album and it would go on to become a mainstay in ELP's set list for the rest of their career as a band and it's just a great arrangement of uh, the classical piece Lovely Joan but it's just done with an ELP twist which is a testament to Keith Emerson's great composing skills. Love Blind sounds like it could have come from Asia you know, especially as Greg Lake played with Asia. Lovely track. Step Aside, great, cool, jazzy little number with great piano work from Keith Emerson and great smoky vocals from Greg Lake. And, you know, when I hear this song, I picture a guy in a hat and a coat standing in an alleyway, almost like a detective, lighting up his cigarettes. It's just really really good and you know, it's a very laid back track probably the most laid back track of the entire album and Cozy Powell plays with a much more laid back approach and a bit more restrained in his playing as opposed to the other tracks but as I said Cozy Powell was no slouch he wasn't afraid he definitely showed no fear playing with these two prog heavyweights and he done an amazing job as I said did miss Carl Palmer on this one very much but cozy pal you know he did a really good job lay down your guns absolutely gorgeous you know keith emerson again on piano and greg lake on vocals absolutely lovely you know greg lake one of the true 
iconic voices in the progressive rock genre, you know, and Emerson and Lake, even though they always clashed, when they got together, it was just magic. And I think that's what makes them so special because even though they both have different ways of doing things, but when they came together, they always delivered. Mars, the bringer of war, really epic, massive, bombastic, everything you want from ELP, it's all here and it just builds and builds and then just eventually just hits you across the face. It's just absolutely epic. And then we got the two bonus tracks, the Locomotion, which is just vintage ELP, fast, hard hitting, and just like a train, you know, hence the name, the Locomotion, and it just comes at full speed ahead. And then we got Vacant Possession. I would say this is probably the weakest of the entire album. I wouldn't say it's bad, but it just feels like, you know, you've had all these big, epic and lovely tracks and in Vacant Possession, you know, as I said, it's okay, but it just kind of feels like it ends the album on a bit of a weak closer, if I'm truly honest. And it's a shame, really, because this actually is a good album, but just um, maybe could have left this track off because it just feels like it doesn't fit on this album. In a way, Locomotion ends, I would have been happy with just that. You know, I would have been just happy it just ended there, but we had another track and it, it's okay, but it's not really a track that I listen to at all, really. I mean, I mean Greg Lake sounds great as always, as does Keith Emerson, and, and so does Cozy Powell, but just feels like this track doesn't fit in with, you know, the massive and gigantic size that is Emerson Lake and Powell, which just doesn't really fit as far as I'm concerned. But maybe someone else might like this track, but I, I didn't like this track. That's the only clunker from Emerson Lake and Powell. You know, I would say that was the only real weak track. So the standout tracks for me are The Score, Touch and Go, Love Blind, Step Aside, Lay Down Your Guns, and Mars, The Bring World War. An epic album. And as I said, a one and done album from a very short-lived ELP offshoot. And sadly, we would lose all three of these amazing musicians. Cozy Power would die in 1998, and we would lose both Keith Emerson and Greg Lake in 2016. But what an amazing one-off album. Would have been interesting to hear what these guys could have cooked up for a follow-up, but it wasn't meant to be. And Emerson and Lake would start clashing again. Go figure. And uh, Cozy Power would leave and go on to form a magnificent band called Force Field with legendary focus guitarist Jan Ackerman. And the rest is history. But a fantastic album from a one and done band and some of the best music that ELP have ever written. And, you know, as I said, for a band that was only together for one recording, they really made a statement and the music really packed a hell of a punch. So there you have it. Emerson, Lake and Powell. Brilliant album. And Carl Palmer is missed. If he was on this album, I probably would have put this album even higher. But what can you do? Really? Carl Palmer was, you know, having a blast with Asia. And he'd done some good stuff with them as well. Some absolutely amazing stuff. So there you have it. Emerson, Lake and Powell. Good stuff here. So that's going to be it from me. I'm going to wrap this up now. What's your favourite track from Emerson, Lake and Powell? Is it The Score, Learning to Fly, The Miracle, Touch and Go, Love Blind, Step Aside, Lay Down Your Guns, Mars, The Bringer of War, Locomotion or Vacant Possession? There's no right or wrong answer. We all have our favourite tracks. You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Progressive Rock and Metal album review series. So until then, take care, everybody, and stay safe. And once again, as always, much appreciated. Thanks for listening.